Hello there old and new friends, it's your friendly neighborhood sunshine squirrel. Welcome back to the channel if you're a returning viewer or subscriber and welcome to this end of YouTube if you are new. Um, I'm a veterinarian that loves teaching and traveling and in today's video we are talking about a subject that is so very near and dear to my heart and that is none other than the golden doodle. Pretty much in my humble, humble opinion, the best designer dog breed out there. There, I said it. Go ahead, say what you want to say in the comments below, but golden doodle lover for life. So like I said guys, I'm a veterinarian by trade, so I'm gonna be approaching this video from more of the medical side of things. Um, I think a lot of people are really interested in this breed, and I mean, what's not to love? I mean, golden doodles are just a fantastic breed, and I think a lot of people kind of rush into it without knowing all there is to know about this designer breed um, and also um, aren't aware of all the different health concerns that you can have. Um, I think with a lot of the designer breeds there's this topic of hybrid vigor and the fact that because they're not a purebred dog um, they do have some genetic advantages and while that may be true um, we still see um, characteristics and traits good and bad from the two breeds the poodle and the golden retriever um, in golden doodles so without further ado let's get into the video all right guys so let's start so the number one most common health issue concern that i see in golden doodles on a day-to-day -day basis has to be ear infections now hold up right there i know some of you were about to pause this video and leave but before you do, let's talk about this. So I know a lot of you out there are thinking, well, Sunshine Squirrel, I have a dog that's not a golden doodle and they have ear infections all the time. What are you talking about? Well, that may be true, but let's take a gander about what is actually behind these ear infections. So basically, when you have a golden doodle, you have a dog whose lineage includes a poodle and a golden retriever. Now, we won't get into all the different genetics and all the F1, Delta Niners, and all that sort of specifics, but you are combining two dogs that are very prone to developing ear infections. Now, what is it about the golden retriever? What is it about the poodle that makes them so prone to developing ear infections? Well, one thing is that they have those adorable, floppy, fluffy ears that we swoon over, but apparently so do yeast and bacteria. They find floppy ears a great environment to grow. They tend to be moist, dark, and cold so they kind of make this perfect temperature that they just love to develop and they love to grow in um you may have another dog out there that has floppy ears like the cocker spaniel labrador retriever basically any floppy eared dog can be predisposed to developing ear infections because of that perfect environment that they form um, so it's really important if you have a golden doodle i would recommend cleaning their ears at least once or twice a month so every two to four Four weeks and then after any sort of bath um, if they go to the local lake or the pool making sure to thoroughly dry out their ears um, from your veterinarian you should be able to get an over-the-counter ear cleanser that you can use at home it's really important to use non medicated ear cleansers to clean your dog's ear because if you use medicated ear cleansers when your dog does not have an infection what you actually can lead to is really resistant and really feisty bacteria and yeast that can ward off and fight off the common antibiotics and antifungals that we use in the ear because you're selecting against the normal microflora, the normal bacteria and yeast that we find. In essence, every dog has yeast and bacteria in their ears, but what happens when an ear infection is that there's either an overgrowth of these typical microflora or there's an abundance of a population of those that are typically not found in the ear and that can lead to the infection. We'll talk about another predisposing factor that can lead to ear infections a little bit later on, but let's move on to number two. So the second most common health condition that I see in the golden doodle has to be ba -ba -da -ba -da, dental disease. Now I know once again some of you are thinking what is this girl talking about but I'm telling you guys once again it goes all back to the lineage of a golden doodle. 
poodles are notorious for suffering from dental disease. It has to do with the conformation of the mouth and kind of how the teeth are inside and aligned. And what we tend to see in poodles, whether they're the standard all the way down to the toy, is that they tend to develop tartar quite frequently. Um, and so if you have a golden doodle, it's really important day one when you bring that new fluffy bundle of joy home to begin a dental hygiene plan. So I don't expect you to go from no brushing to suddenly brushing your pet's teeth overnight. Start off small. So the first thing that you could try is just taking a soft washcloth and using pet friendly toothpaste, gently wipe the outside of your pet's ears, touching the gum line as well. It's really important when you're brushing your pet's teeth to use pet friendly toothpaste. The toothpaste that you and I use actually has harmful ingredients um, that are not good for pets to have. So always, always make sure to use pet friendly toothpaste. From the washcloth, you can then work up to a finger brush. And it's just this little sleeve that you just slip on your finger. It has little bristles and you can just kind of brush again. And then from there, you can work up to a toothbrush. If your gold noodle says, no thank you ma'am, no thank you sir, do not touch my teeth, do not touch my mouth, then the next best thing to use are dental chews. Um, I tend to recommend enzymatic dental chews. They kind of help with bacteria and odor within the mouth. Another thing that you can use as well are water additives. Um, talk to your veterinarian about the best dental chews and water additives that work well for your pet. Um, there are also dental wipes, so they kind of look like baby wipes and same sort of thing you take the wipes and wipe around your pet's mouth um, one of the best things that you can do for your pet though is to talk to your veterinarian about getting your pet in for a yearly dental cleaning um, there are some pets that will even recommend cleaning their teeth up to twice a year a dental cleaning is an anesthetic procedure uh, where we use a tool called a scaler to basically blast off tartar from the teeth I kind of refer to it as a fancy power washer and while your pet is under anesthesia for their dental cleaning your veterinarian will have a chance to actually probe the teeth like when you and I go to the dentist and they have that sharp hook tool and they poke around and the dentist hollers at all those fun numbers like four three two one you know well we do the same thing for pets <laughs> and a dental cleaning is a perfect opportunity for your veterinarian to see if there are any teeth that are loose fractured or look like they're forming an infection another great thing to talk to your veterinarian about as well is performing dental radiographs. Just like when you and I go to the dentist, we can take dental radiographs on our furry friends, and it's recommended. I typically think of a tooth as like an iceberg. So the top surface of the iceberg or the tooth can be majestic and beautiful and pristine, but below that water, below that gum surface, it can be absolute chaos. So definitely talk to your veterinarian and see if dental radiographs is a good idea for your pet. So the next common health problem that I commonly see in golden doodles are none other than allergies. Now I know some of you out there are just slowly shaking your head, you, you've been down this road, you have a golden doodle, you know the battle of the allergies. A little bit ironic to me that while a lot of people claim that golden doodles are a completely hypoallergenic breed, which they are not, uh, that they suffer from allergies themselves. <laughs> Um, so when it comes to managing allergies in pets, it's important that we determine the source or what is causing that allergy. In pets, allergies can be caused from a number of different things, or they can be caused by one thing at a time or multiple things in tandem. So I'll give you an example, environmental allergies. Um, when it comes to environmental allergies, it's similar to you and I. Um, pets can suffer from being allergic to different pollens, different grasses that are in the environment. Sometimes we'll have pets that have non-seasonal um, environmental allergies, meaning that year-round they're allergic. Um, so for example, think about someone that's allergic to dust. Um, they're allergic to something in the environment, but it doesn't matter if it's spring, winter, um, they're gonna be allergic. But then we can also have pets like people that have seasonal allergies. So depending upon the type of pollen, the type of grass that's out there in the great beyond, that can trigger an allergic reaction. We tend to see pets that suffer from seasonal allergies during the time of season changes. So maybe from summer into fall, spring to summer, that sort of thing. Um, other allergies that pets can suffer for 
from, excuse me, include contact. So there are rare cases where there are some pets that are allergic to carpeting. Um, they may be allergic to different detergents and things like that. Um, so talk to your vet, you know, if you're suspicious that your pet may have allergies. Sometimes if we see things like environmental allergies, um, we may notice red or itchy or watery eyes, um, sneezing, a little bit of some nasal discharge. Um, those can also be signs of a upper respiratory infection. So once again, never self-diagnose or diagnose your doodle at home. Always make sure to check in with your friendly veterinarian. Um, when it comes to things like contact allergy, uh, pets may break out in hives or they may have redness or erythema on their belly and on their arms. Um, another allergy that we can commonly see in pets is food allergy. Um, now when it comes to food allergies in pets, they are typically triggered by particular proteins. So think things like chicken, pork, and beef. If your veterinarian is going to work your pet up for food allergies, we typically put the pet on what is called a diet trial or a food trial. And during this trial, your veterinarian will typically recommend putting your pet on a novel or new protein that they've never had before. Um, they may even recommend putting them on a prescription-based uh, diet, a hypoallergenic diet, hydrolyzed protein diet. And in essence, we're basically just trying to see if the current protein that your pet is being fed is causing an allergy. Now, don't be deceived. A lot of times pets that actually have food allergy have been fed a particular food their entire life and then they just seem to suddenly develop an allergy to it. So don't think that even if you haven't changed your pet's food recently that they don't have food allergies. After your pet has completed a food allergy trial for about six weeks, then we typically do what's called a challenge and that's when we slowly begin to introduce to your pet what they used to have so it's really important while your veterinarian is conducting that food trial on your pet to not give them any sorts of treats or any sort of food outside of that prescription or that novel protein then we can slowly begin to introduce one thing at a time and then begin to understand your pet's allergies better when it comes to doing diagnostic testing for food allergy in pets, things like saliva testing, all those sorts of things, they just don't really work. The best way is really a food trial. Now, if you're suspicious that your pet has an environmental allergy, we can do what's called intradermal skin testing. This is basically when your veterinarian would shave a plot of skin and then inject um, different common allergens to pets and then measure the wheel or the raised bump that develops depending upon the degree of reaction lets us know how allergic or how sensitive your pet's immune system is to that particular allergen. Intradermal skin testing is not something you're gonna probably find in a general practice setting, so if it is something that you really wanna to pursue to your, with your vet, make sure to ask them and they can always refer you to a veterinary dermatologist. Now, when it comes to managing your pet's allergies, it is really important, once again, to have a discussion with your veterinarian. There are specific veterinary products that can be used to help manage your pet's allergies. And there even through veterinary dermatology are ways that we can desensitize pets over time to certain allergies in their environment. But once again, I would recommend having a heart dart with your veterinarian and seeing what's the best fit for you and your pet. All right, the next common health problem on our list our joint issues, arthritis, think of all those crunchy, crackly things that happen in those joints. So once again, kind of like we've mentioned before, when you have a golden doodle, you're taking two dog breeds and it's really important to know the different things that both of those breeds can suffer from. Um, golden doodles um, can suffer from things like elbow and hip dysplasia, just like golden retrievers can. So it's really important when you are out there and searching for your new bundle of joy, make sure um, to ask the breeder if if they have tested the poodle and the golden retriever parents for hips, elbows, eyes. Um, another one that you may want to ask about is heart exam as well. Really important for us when we're taking a look at a puppy and determining if they are going to develop issues with those things in the future, if their parents have those issues and what was their parent's score. Talk to your veterinarian about what a good score for elbows and hips um, is and if you have any questions about a potential breeder I would highly recommend checking in with your local veterinarian and hearing what they have to say.
And unfortunately, arthritis and joint issues can develop in even the most healthy of pets. So if you start to notice that your furry friend is slowing down, not wanting to walk up and down the stairs, not wanting to jump on and off furniture, or just taking a little bit longer, it's a good idea to talk to your veterinarian about some potential treatments um, and some therapies um, for arthritic pain. All right, the next common health issue that we see in the golden doodle are lumps, bumps, and growths. So once again, guys, it goes right back again to what is the genetic makeup of these pets. Um, we do see genetic links between pets when it comes to things like growths and tumors. Um, and we also see some breed predispositions for developing certain growths and tumors. So make sure if you ever find a growth or a lump on your golden doodle to take them to your vet and have your vet do a thorough exam. Um, it's really hard for your vet to be able to look at a mass and just 100% say, it is this sort of mass. Um, we really recommend doing diagnostics to determine what sort of cells are growing there. Your veterinarian may recommend doing a test called a cytology or a fine needle aspirate. And it's basically when your vet will take different sized needles, poke the mass, and then take that fluid that they get from that mass spray it on a microscope slide and then look at it under the microscope. And when we look at it under the microscope, we're looking to see the general population of cells making up that mass. That can help us to determine the type of mass. Now, of course, with a test like that, there are limitations. So depending upon, sometimes there are masses where they have this outer coating of fat or tissue, but then the inner or the core is actually something more aggressive. So kind of think like a candy that has like a hard outer shell or has multiple layers to it, but the inside there's something different in there. Um, so your veterinarian may recommend to do a biopsy. Uh, biopsy is when we take a little core or a little punch from that mass and submit it off to a pathologist for their review. Your veterinarian may or may not recommend a biopsy that's a piece of the mass or an excisional biopsy where they take the whole mass depending upon the location and the size of the mass. Typically, if your veterinarian has a concern for the size of a mass or the aggressiveness of a mass or even if they'll be able to achieve what we call good margins or enough tissue around the mass they may only do the biopsy or they may remove it all it just kind of depends so i would say once again just to be safe any sort of new lump bump or growth you should definitely have your veterinarian take a look at and then for any lumps bumps or growths that have been previously worked up it's always a good idea just to keep an eye on them for changes in color texture and size and the last condition that we're going to talk about is gastric dilation and volvulus. So commonly this is called GDV or bloat. And this is one of those conditions guys that isn't super common, but when it does occur, it tends to be bad and it is life threatening. Um, gastric dilation is when the stomach becomes distended with air. Um, we don't really know what causes this to happen. Um, there is believed that there is some predisposition to male large breed dogs and barrel or deep chested dogs. Um, so once again, the poodle side of the golden doodle can be predisposed to developing this. Um, and typically signs that you'll see in a dog that's bloated is that they may have you can actually see that the belly is distended. You'll see the sides of the abdomen are pushed out. Uh, the pet may seem like they're laboring to breathe. Um, as the stomach becomes more and more distended, it pushes against the diaphragm, making it difficult to breathe. And then it also will push against the blood vessels in the abdomen, and it makes it difficult for blood uh, from the back of the body. So the un or deoxygenated blood from coming back up to the heart and then becoming oxygenated again. So once again, you know, just something to keep in mind. Um, if you notice that your pet has signs of bloat, absolutely take them to the vet ASAP. Um, sometimes bloat can then lead to what's called volvulus where the stomach will then flip on itself. Um, and these are life-threatening emergency situations. So this isn't something that, you know, I would say is super, super common in the golden doodle breed, but is absolutely something that you should be aware of and be on the lookout for. 
I would talk to your veterinarian about options to help um, prevent this from occurring. So there is a surgical procedure called a gastropexy where the stomach is actually sutured to the inner abdominal wall. Um, it will prevent the stomach from flipping on itself and leading to that life-threatening volvulus. Um, a dog that has a gastropexy procedure done still can become bloated, but their stomach won't be able to flip and turn on itself. So it's something that we typically will perform in predisposed puppies uh, when they go in for their spay or their castration procedure. So that's a great time to have that done. Well, let me know in the comments below if you are a doodle mama or a doodle papa and you have seen these conditions in your furry friend. I would be interested to hear. Um, also, let me know, guys, um, if you found this video helpful. Um, make sure to share it with friends of yours that are doodle lovers. Subscribe for more, and I will see you guys next time.